or listening to a podcast from Glen Stoll Abbey. It may seem strange for me, as a monk, to draw a lesson from lockdown. Why do so then, you may ask? Well, as I see it, the time of lockdown is like a worldwide monastic experience. To begin with, take those who aspire to the monastic way of life. At the beginning, everything about this unexplored reality of monastic life appears so fascinating to them. Although they know little of monastic life and may even feel a bit scared, yet they feel attracted to it. What you see in them is an immense vigor. But after a few weeks or months, the true demands of this type of living become painfully obvious, and the necessity of profound change to adjust to the new conditions of their existence emerges. Now, if at this point they make a conscious decision to make a long-term effort to change, a time of truly spiritual transformation will follow. All that previously seemed a challenge will become increasingly easier to bear, and the burden of monastic life will be light indeed, and its yoke sweet. Now, isn't the same thing happening with the pandemic around us? At its outset in Europe, we were moved by the pictures of musicians performing on balconies, first in Italy, then in other countries. Many were in awe of experience immense solidarity with members of our society in the medical profession, working so hard for us. On the whole, something precious in us was revealed. We seemed to have been changed. We really seemed to be living differently. During these unstable times, the world began to think about the state of the human condition. However, the more time moves on, the less this reflectiveness seems to be around. Also, all the symptoms of change, so evident back in March or April, are almost gone. What is present is a sense of burden and huge impatience resulting from it. We just want to have it all over and done with. Now, doesn't all of this resemble the situation that a novice in the monastery may find himself in? Yes, this nagging necessity of change that he faces at the time of crisis, if he is determined to stay, is very similar. So what can be done in his, and indeed our case? What's the way to undergo this ultimately beneficial transformation? I turned to Saint Benedict and tried to learn a lesson from his teaching for monks, applying this to our current experience. In the rule, Benedict makes it clear that the life of a monk is not going to be easy. He labels it a labor of obedience. This is, to his mind, the only way for human transformation. A labor of obedience. Now, I realize that obedience 
is not a very fashionable term nowadays. But as I personally find obedience an exciting and liberating idea, I would like to encourage you to think of learning it during this time. Of course, to learn to obey involves effort and hard work. The type of hard work I am speaking of is not one with physical characteristics, like, say, working out in a gym. It concerns exclusively the sphere of our mentality, a change in our mind. Curiously, so many in our societies are more than happy to be concerned about what in us trying to keep our bodies fit. Might we be equally keen to undertake a different type of exercise? A training of our thoughts. The pandemic actually forces us, at times painfully, to deal with our mentality. So shouldn't we take this opportunity to redefine our approach to what is dearest in us? what we have of God in us. If we considered the mind and our thinking as the most precious thing in us, the sign of the divine presence in us, we might start looking at the obedience exercised by the mind as the best possible way to be transformed, which at the end of the day will be truly beneficial, leading us to freedom. Because, believe it or not, it is precisely through surrendering our external freedom that we attain genuine freedom. Now you might say, that's all fine, but this relates to the spiritual life. And we have here governments imposing limitations on our actual freedom. I reply with the Apostle Peter. As Christians, we should, for the Lord's sake, accept the authority of every human institution. And, what is more, having fulfilled their commands, add, we are unworthy servants since it is in Jesus Christ that we have the model of how to be fully obedient. He himself, although the Son of God, underwent an unbearable suffering for our sake, and so he learned obedience through what he experienced. Now I dare to ask, what if this time of pandemic, as a sort of parallel, is meant to form in us an attitude of true obedience? What if through this particular experience we are being given a chance to begin radical change? A renewal of the mindset in everyone joining the ranks of monks was what ultimately mattered to Saint Benedict. This is the point of the whole rule and the monastic life, an ongoing, lifelong conversion that takes place through obedience. Couldn't this also be a desirable outcome of the current situation for each of us. A change in our thinking, a transformation in our approach to life and other people, a wholly new mindset. Let me ask again, what if this time of lockdown is given us for such a conversion in our lives. Some will say, I am not interested 
in any change. But whoever takes full advantage of the current experience will prove that he or she has learned the best of lessons from this lockdown.